Hello, welcome to this tutorial on how to use Plotly or Plot.ly to make information visualizations to show your data in new and interesting ways. It's a great tool in that it has a number of different amazing features that will suit any person, scholar or leisure. As you can see, it's currently in beta, meaning they're constantly changing it, updating it, and making it easier to use. Uh, as you can see, they use a number of data formats, Excel sheets, CSV, TSV, MATLAB, MS Access, or text files. And even better, if it doesn't currently support your file, just email them and they'll see what they can do. One of the great features about it is that you can analyze the data in real time by hovering over them. Another great feature is that it allows you to export any of those files in, in images, PDFs, etc. Another tool is that it allows you to share and collaborate with other people. This is great because often in these data sets you're using tons of data and you want everyone to be able to see it, to work on it together. In the actual tool, it allows you to use their API to, with things like Python, MATLAB, Perl. It allows you to go even further into the tool. As you see here, these are a number of great visualizations they have to offer. They're very active on social media sites like Twitter, Facebook. As you can see here, Washington Post has actually used Plotly. And here's the great tool showing it. Now when we click it, we can actually visually see, see it on Plotly's website, right there. This way we could change any of the formatting, change what it looks like, the colors, all those great things I'll explain later in the guide. One of my favorite things is that you can download it, you can save the file, you can view the data on the website directly, right here. Allowing you to view the data allows you to personally make your own style graph to change how it is. Now the first thing you need to do is find the data you actually want to use. They're just doing a basic Google search. will get you over 200 million different data sets. From things like the Department of Health and Human Services, um, Pew Research Center, Now one of the big things to remember though is that oftentimes this data you're going to be getting, it's not formatted, it won't work correctly. Pew Research, for example, has tons of great free data. However, there's going to be a lot of work on your end to make it work for a visualization tool based on how they do the answers and stuff like that. That's why I personally recommend using someone like the World Bank because of how they already have formatted the data in a style that suits you. So see, you just go to country, Afghanistan, and school enrollment. Now you can see they have a nice little graph here, but they actually show you all the specific raw data for you to look at. That you can download that data in Excel, XML, or CSV. I personally find the CSV files to be the easiest to work with. Now it's time to actually go into Plotly.com. Now, once you log in, there's a number of different ways. You can use Facebook, Twitter, Google. I personally recommend Google because of how it integrates with Google Drive to make it a far easier experience. Now, as you can see, you can just upload a regular file or you can use, say, Dropbox or Google Drive. When Dropbox, you just log in, brings you right to your drive, and you can click it. Now with Google Drive, what happens is, again, you log in, and then see, it shows you actually all the files that they can use, the spreadsheets. As you can see, this is my file already imported. As you can see here, the headers of all the columns have already been named. 
This is because of how I formatted it in the actual CSV file. If you notice, the top row, everything is pushed all the way to the left, the line to the left, whereas all the other bottom data is all the way to the right. If I didn't do that, what would happen is the top row, the top column, right, right here, that would all be the names instead. So now we're just going to do really basic line graph. So we make obviously the year, the x-axis, and then we're just going to compare Delaware, DC, Wisconsin, West Virginia. And just hit line plot. Very simple. Now once we do it, we get in here and we can actually visually analyze the graph already there. I'm now going to show you some of the ways you can change the visualization of the graph itself under the style bar. You can individually change the specific tracer itself or you can change the whole one. You can make it invisible, you can make it visible, you can hide or show the legend, change the axes, though on this graph that isn't very helpful. This is a cool feature. You can change the type of graph with in it itself to a from a scatter to a bar to a box or even a 2d histogram in the scatter you can change the actual lines and markers in a bar you can change how they're stacked the overlays things like that you can even change the direction of it itself this would be cool if you say wanted to make it so just DC was a bar graph or something like that instead Now in the style page, you can actually change the visibility of the lines themselves. If you want to make one brighter, you can change the type of lines, again changing how thick they are, or the color if you wanted to. With the markers, you can change the shape of them. If you wanted to say make the ones all stars, you can change the size, and then you can also change the if there were say an error bar. So like for this graph, let's just say hypothetically that there was a margin of error of let's say 1%. You can change that and it will actually show the person looking at the graph that there was 1%, so it could be plus or minus 1. That's a great feature. Now in the layout you can change all the font styles, the size of them, the color, anything you really want to do. You can change the width, you can change the background color, you can turn off the auto size. This is a cool one, you can change the margin colors. And also again, the margins themselves. We're just gonna go with a nice gray. Uh, and then this one's fun, you can change the plot padding. If you say want there to be a lot of padding on the outside of the graph, this could be very useful. In the axes, you can change, see the outside of them, if you want there to be auto ranges, if you want it to be more specific with how close the numbers are. You can change the lines on the outside, thickness, color, all the good stuff. Now this is with the actual ticks on the outside. If you notice, there's no, at the top bar here, we're getting ticks outside it. That way, in case there was, it's just a little easier if, say, you turn off the grid lines right here. And then you also can change the zero line. Though in this graph there isn't a zero line, so it's not as important for right now. Again, you can change the size of the actual ticks themselves on the outside. You can change the width, the length, the color where they are. Again, you can change the labels of the plot. So right now I'm just going to label this uh, income inequality. And then we'll change this to date. And here this is just the percentage of inequality. A fun feature is that you can actually annotate it. Let's say that you wanted to show why this happened. Uh, so in like 1990 when uh, Bill Clinton was elected, perhaps that changed the income inequality or perhaps it didn't. But you can do that. So see you just put it, it pops up over in the corner there. You can say put 
the mayor was elected this year. Then you just drag it to where on the map you want to put it and just drop it. It's great. You can even change the arrow sizes. I now want to get into some of the more advanced features of Plotly. Now here is some data I have and I want to make it so that I have a graph that's both a box plot and a line plot combined. So what I'll do is the area on the right, the trial runs, they're all going to be boxes. Whereas the medians and the Y will be a line plot. So first I'll do is I'll mark the X and then I'll mark the Y and then I'll just hit line plot. See, perfect. Right there, it did it, it did the trials, it did it, great. Now I want to though make it so that the second half of my graph is a box plot. So again, I'll just click the columns I want to use, hit box plot, and oh no. See, I have the box plots, but I want them to be on the same graph. What I'll do, go back to the grid, hit insert into, and put it back into this plot I've already opened. So see now, perfect. They're already lined up, everything's on the same page. Now my graph looks much nicer than before. Here I'm going to show you another cool feature. Now, here we have the price of bitcoins by day. Now what we're going to do is first make a line plot using the date as the x and then I want the opening and closing amounts to be the bars. Now you see uh, we have this nice line graph showing you the price. Now we're going back. Now I want to actually make it so that the highs and lows are uh, on this plot as well. I hit scatter plot. Oh, shoot, forgot to put it on the same graph. So I close out, go back. Now, remember to insert it into the old graph. See, now look it. We have all these nice errors, basically, to show you how much it's fluctuated per day. Now, also, though, I want to just randomly mess up here. So, oh, shoot. I added this section here, didn't mean to do it. Now if you notice, on this page, there is an undo. However, you can't undo what you did on this page. So what we just do is hit the style from what we did before. Uh, we want to get rid of all the bars. So we hit all bars, hide it, voila, problem solved. The last option I'm going to show is the share button. So on the corner of every page, there's a share option. Just click it and it pops up with a naming. Once you put the name, just click OK or name and it pops up with this screen showing you how you can make it either private or public so either everyone can see it or only people with the link now a great thing you can do is this include student options in the bottom here when you click that it allows you to put a class a project name anything you want it also allows you to share this instantly with Facebook or Twitter and you can add collaborators or users who can actually go in and edit the data. The examples are great. One of the problems is though it doesn't actually tell you how to make it look like it's supposed to. I mean you can make a line plot but that doesn't help you. One of the great features though is that it does follow the same rules. So once you know how to use it, it will stay the same forever. Just like all of these look the same. In the end, it's great. However, like I said, it relies on you knowing what you're doing. You can't just willy-nilly go into this and expect to get a good result. In the end, Plotly is a great tool. However, one of the problems is it relies on the user to already be fully aware of how to make a great graph. Now see, if I just randomly click buttons, it doesn't tell you that your graph is going to come out horrible in the end. See here, it just doesn't work. When it really should look like this. 